Hello guys, how are you all? Welcome back to my channel so today we are gonna see What if Naruto and Hinata were trained by QB? Part 2 Subscribe if you enjoy the video And also check the description So let's begin the story The team and Tazuna were now on a small boat heading towards Wave Naruto was asking Sakura and Sasuke Have you guys checked your supplies alright? Kakashi smiled and thought Minato sensei He is a natural born leader just like his father. All right, this is as far as I can take you, said the ferryman. Tizuna replied, thank you for coming this far. The man nodded and pushed off and left. The group left and started to walk down a road. Hey Tizuna, is there a hotel in town? Asked Kakashi. Yeah, but it is in shambles. It's a place that Gato's thugs use as a hangout I wouldn't sleep there. You guys should stay with me and my family, said Tizuna. Yes, yeah, sure, said Kakashi. Naruto was walking along with the group, then he heard it. A faint exhale of breath coming from a bush about ten yards ahead and to the right of the road. He thought, so one of their next assassins is here already time to put on a show. All right, yelled Naruto as he ran forward then pretended to listen intently. There. He yelled as he threw a kunai at a bush directly across from where his true goal was. Tazuna said, Kid don't scare us like that. Naruto walked back to the group. Sorry about that. Then looked at Kakashi and nodded his head back. Then, from the same bush he threw the kunai in earlier, another kunai came whizzing out, going straight across the road into the other bush. What the hell? said Sakura. Then a Naruto shadow clone walked out from behind the bush. Oh. Kakashi walked over to check where Naruto's kunai had gone. It had gone through and struck a tree on the other side, and beneath it was a white snow rabbit. Then the rabbit darted out onto then down the road. Sakura started to yell and ramble about how Naruto should not hurt the cute rabbit. However, Kakashi, Naruto, and Sasuke all were thinking along the same lines a white rabbit, at this time of year substitution. Just then the sound of something big slicing through air could be heard. Kakashi went wide-eyed and yelled, Everyone down now! Kakashi tackled Tazuna to the ground, as Naruto tackled Sakura, and Sasuke ducked. A giant sword went over them and embedded into a tree, then a man appeared out of nowhere onto its handle. Kakashi stood and walked forward a little bit. Well, 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 if it isn't Sabuza Momokai Demon of the Mist. And you are Sharingan Kakashi the Copy Ninja, said Zabuza. Well, I didn't expect someone as high caliber as you to stoop so low as to be hired by scum like Gato, said Kakashi. I don't have to answer to you, said Zabuza, but I just need the money for some personal reasons. I thought he wasn't going to say anything, said Sakura. I said that much dot because you are all going to die, said Zabuza. A thick mist suddenly appeared, then Zabuza disappeared. He started listing off some areas of the body that were fatal. All of a sudden, an intense killing intent was felt by all of the members of the group. Tazuna and the three genin were all about to shit their pants, and Sasuke was the worst because it was giving him flashbacks to when Itachi had manhandled him the night of the Uchiha massacre. Kakashi said, Don't worry everyone, I don't let my comrades die, I will protect you with my life. Is that so? Said Zabuza as he appeared in between the genin and... As Zabuza was swinging his sword, Kakashi moved lightning fast and stabbed Zabuza in the stomach, Naruto said, behind you, as the Zabuza in front turned to water. Then Kakashi was cut in half. Then Kakashi turned to water, water clone said Zabuza confused. Then a kunai was placed on his neck and Kakashi said, End of the road. As Kakashi was about to slice his throat, Zabuza appeared behind him. Then Zabuza swung. Kakashi ducked underneath it, but Zabuza kicked him into the water nearby. Then as Kakashi surfaced, Zabuza said, Water prison. Just. Then a ball of water encased Kakashi, one that Kakashi would not be able to escape on his own and Zabuza had to keep his hand in it to maintain it. This water is as strong as steel. Good luck getting out meanwhile I think it's time to kill your little twerps and relieve you of babysitting Kakashi. He. 
put one hand up and said, Water clone a water clone rose from the water. So brats, what do you think is gonna happen now you think you are ninja? You aren't a ninja. When you are so used to hovering between life and death, when you get so dangerous you are listed in the bingo book, then you can call yourselves ninja. He said then he kicked Naruto in the face, sending him flying away. Sasuke charged, but just got thrown away. Kakashi said, Listen to me everyone, I will not stand a chance against him. He can't leave this prison, and his clone shouldn't make it too far away. Run. Naruto thought, yeah, wasn't it you who told us in training not to ever leave a comrade? That only those worse than trash leave a comrade besides I'd die if we ran Sasuke thought the same exact thing. The two looked at each other and nodded. Naruto made around 30 clones that ran and dog piled onto Zabuza. In that time Naruto came up with a better plan. Zabuza pushed all the clones off of him they all went sliding back. Naruto stood up then tossed a large shuriken to Sasuke. Sasuke felt how heavy it was then smiled. He spun around, then the jumped up, and threw the shuriken. It went by the water clone and went for the real Zabuza. He simply caught it. He wondered as to why it felt a little heavy. Then he noticed the second one coming and at the last second he jumped over it. The one behind him poofed and was replaced by Naruto that threw a kanai at him. Zabuza was forced to release the prison he spun the shuriken to throw it at what he thought was Naruto until that one poofed as well. What then? The freed Kakashi started to come at him, he started to swing the shuriken at him until it poofed and became the real Naruto. Zabuza front flipped over Kakahi then kicked Naruto back to land. You got lucky you little shits, said Zabuza. Don't kid yourself, they got the better of you and you know it, said Kakahi. It matters not, it's down to you and me again Kakashi, said Zabuza. Yeah, but this time I am pissed, said Kakashi. The two jumped away from each other as they ran through hand science. They each shot identical water dragons at each other, and the two cancelled each other out. Then Kakashi copied what Sabuza was going to say as he was saying it, then Kakashi sent it at him before he even did it. Sabuza was totally confused and shaken up, as the giant vortex went straight at him, eventually leaving him against a tree. Can you see the future? asked Sabuza. Yes, and this is the day you die, said Kakashi, preparing the death blow. Then two from out of nowhere fly into Zabuza's neck. Then the ninjas saw a person standing on a branch of a tree about thirty yards away. You were right, today was his last day alive. I must thank you though, I have been tracking him for days now. Then the boy disappeared in a gust of wind and reappeared next to Zabuza, whose pulse was being checked by Kakashi. Kakashi said, he is dead. Naruto thought, that's strange, to put on the dummy act then said, hey, who do you think you are? As he ran over to stop in front of the boy. Naruto, Kakashi said. What, I mean we were pushed to our limits with Zabuza, and that means something since you're here but he just shows up and bam just like that. Kakashi reached down and held both of Naruto's shoulders in his hands. I know I know. But this is the ninja world. You have to understand there are children younger than you, and stronger than me. As he shot a glance at Sasuke, clearly alluding to Itachi. Sasuke gulped. Naruto said, I know sensei but but. He was facing away from the boy, and towards Kakashi, he had a don't you get it look on his face. I mean, how could he just show up and kill Zabuza with just before you were about to kill him? Indeed. I am sorry I profited off of your hard work, but I must go now, I need to dispose of this body. Kakashi's eyes widened as he realized the error of his judgment a minute too late as the boy disappeared with Zabuza. Damn it, said Kakashi. What is it? said both Sakura and Sasuke. Never mind it, said Naruto. Then Kakashi said, we need to get to Tazuna's house and rest and heal then we will oversee him completing the bridge and finish our mission. Right, said the team. Sorry I'm such a bother, said Tazuna. It's quite all right, said Naruto. They started to walk off, but Kakashi fainted. The whole team yelled out for their sensei, but he was dead to the world. Kakashi sensei, 
yelled the team. Alas, it was to no avail as Kakashi fell, dead to the world. Naruto was instantly on high alert for any other enemies that might attack in their now jonin-less situation. Sasuke, and even Sakura, were also on high alert. That's when Naruto looked at them, and they all nodded, then Naruto made four shadow clones. They picked up Kakashi, while Tazuna moved to stand in front of the clones holding Kakashi, Sasuke moved to the left of Tazuna, Sakura to the right, and Naruto in front of Tazuna. All right, brats, let's get to my house on the double, said. They all nodded and took off. As they ran through the center of the little village, the team was left utterly speechless. There were children, orphans most likely, sitting next to huts. There was not a single gleam of happiness in any person's eyes. There were people starved and so malnourished one could see their ribs. There were two boys, no older than Naruto fighting over a piece of bread down an alley between two huts. They passed by the market and noticed a lack of produce and meat. This was a dying village. A dying land. All because of one man. That leech. That venomous creature that cared more for his $100,000 shoes than he did for the well-being of any person. The trash. The scum. The bane of the existence of these people. Each member of the team as they raced through the town, made a silent vow to be sure to take Gato's head back to. The team reached Tazuna's home and followed Tazuna in. Father oh goodness what the heck is going on, said Tsunami. This ninja collapsed after a battle, we need to put him in one of the spare bedrooms, said Tazuna. Tsunami nodded and told the Genins to lay him on the couch while I prepare his room. Does he have any wounds? The Genins shook their heads. Okay, then I guess he just needs to rest. She then disappeared upstairs. I wonder how long Sensei will be out of it, said Sakura. I don't know, said Naruto. Yeah, said Sasuke. Just then a groan was heard from the couch. The genin looked at their Sensei. Hey Sensei, that lady called, you know, the one from a month ago dot said something about being late whatever that means said Naruto, then laughed as Kakashi's eyes widened and he tried to sit up. That's I'm dot out. He laid back down. Oh dot hey guys, said the one-eyed ninja. Sakura blanched and thought, TMI, T dot M dot I. Naruto and Sasuke were laughing so hard, and Kakashi was blushing. Tsunami came back down the stairs to announce that the room was ready. Naruto made four clones who then took Kakashi to his room. When Naruto came back downstairs he was told that supper was ready, he said. Thank you, but could I take a plate to eat in the room I'll be sleeping in, and can I take the plate for Kakashi-sensei? You certainly may, said Tsunami as she prepared and handed two plates of food to the blonde, here enjoy. Thank you said the blonde, disappearing up the stairs. Naruto brought the food up to Kakashi, but he was already asleep, so Naruto just ate it himself. Now to go and have a nice long talk with. Naruto would be sleeping in the same room with his team, meaning that he would have to meditate with Kakashi in the room with him. Oh well he thought. Naruto sat down on his sleeping bag and put himself in the lotus position and began to meditate. He went to his mindscape. Geez, what's stuck up you today? Asked Naruto. Anyways, Q, it's time I put a special alteration to one of the seals that is keeping my true strength at bay. Do what? Yelled the fox. Well, tell me, how long does it take to break the first seal to unlock 10% more of my brute force? Said Naruto. QB shifted his head, as if calculating. About 10 seconds beat Y? I'm going to fight Zabuza Momochi, Demon of the Mist, Master of the Silent Kill. One second might be too much time to release some skill, said Naruto. Not to mention whatever abilities his little friend might have. True, true, but how will you do this, said Kyuubi. I am going to alter the structure of these seals and create various relay seals. These seals will be on my arm, but invisible. If I need to alter them further... I can make them visible by thinking about them being visible, but the big bonus is I can release the seal without using hand signs or anything. Anyway, I gotta go see a Kuwait. What is your real name? Asked Naruto. 
Kurama, said QB. Okay, I'll see you later Kurama said Naruto as he left his mind. He got out of his lotus position to sit in a regular criss-cross position. He pulled up his shirt to see his seals. Then he got to work. Time skips the next day. Naruto. I always tried to catch up to you. You were always the one I wanted to impress. You were the person that drove me to train harder and now when you need me. Said the teenage girl. Who is that? I can't tell who it is. My vision is too fuzzy. He thought. When you need me, I will help you. Because you helped me in my time of need. I will help you because. The next words he couldn't make out before he heard a large explosion. Naruto sat up. He was releasing a heavy cold sweat. He looked around and noticed everyone was staring at him. You're okay then Naruto, you were making some pretty weird noises in your sleep. Asked Sakura. Yeah, I'm fine, just a nightmare. Said the blonde then he thought, what the hell was that dream about? Anyways, it's time I talked with you guys about something. Go get the bridge builder and bring him in here too. Said Kakashi. Five minutes later. With Tazuna in the room Kakashi spoke. I, to put it bluntly, believe that Sabuza is still alive. What? exclaimed Sasuke, Sakura, and Tazuna. Sakura said. But that hunter Nin. Naruto interrupted her. The ninja is the master of deception. That is correct. Started Kakashi think about. Why did the hunter Nin not help us until the very last minute? Why did the hunter Nin use which are usually used for medical reasons and not to kill. And why did the hunter Nin not destroy the body right then? Think about it. That hunter Nin was really trying to save in any case. The way he was, he really was almost dead. So he should be out of it about as long as I will be. In the meantime, we need to get you guys stronger. All right, said Sakura. Whatever, I already knew this, said the still sleepy blonde. HN said Sasuke. Later at the Bat Cave I mean open field. I'm gonna teach you guys a technique to aid in your everyday ninja lives and for your chakra control just watch this as he walked with the crutches up a tree. He went to turn back to his team, to come face to face with Naruto, who was standing straight with crossed arms. What's so special about this sensei? Asked the blonde. Needless to say Sasuke and Sakura's eyes were bulging out of their skulls, LOL, Green Day reference LOL, and Kakashi's eyes were pretty wide. Well, I guess you can skip this part of the training then, said Kakashi, but the others should continue with this. Mark the tree with a kanai to track how high you go Naruto, come with me. Sasuke was thinking, Bilb, how strong are you really and Sakura was feeling useless until she ran up the tree. Wow, I'm good at this, said Sakura. Come no Sasuke-kun, she said. But Sasuke couldn't get it. Well, it looks like her control is superior to yours Sasuke. Said Kakashi. I'm a clone he left. Answered Kaka's hit at the questioning gaze from Sasuke. But you should continue to run up and down the tree to build up your chakra reserves. Okay Sakura. Meanwhile, with Naruto and the real Kakashi. The two had just walked out into another clearing. And after checking to make sure they were well out of hearing range Kakashi began. All right, stop the act. What do you mean, sensei? Questioned the blonde. How strong are you, really? Dot what is your untapped strength? Asked Kakashi. I don't know what you're talking about, said Naruto. Oh, please, you can already walk up trees. You can make hundreds of shadow clones. You can do seal work. Yeah, I watched you messing with those seals yesterday. Also, dot what were you fiddling with? Were you messing with the seals that keep locked away? Said Kakashi. How did you? Started Naruto. You just told me. Kakashi. Interrupted, now speak. Naruto sighed. Listen, do I really need to tell you? Kakashi nodded. Okay, Dad, I'll only tell you as much as I can at the moment. You see, a couple years ago, it was my birthday, Dot, which is also the day the village celebrates when QB was defeated by the fourth Hokage. Dot, I just wanted to go out to the market to get some food. Dot, the villagers saw me and attacked. They were drunk and I ran. I knew I could have fought back a little bit, but then I would only prove their motives true. Anyways, they nearly killed me, left me for dead in a ditch, 
and at that moment my prisoner pulled me into my mindscape to have a conversation. He has been training me ever since, said Naruto. Interesting, so about what level are you? asked Kakashi. I can't say dot cause I don't really know, said Naruto. And the seals, said Kakashi. Funny think about that initially, Kyuubi, I mean Kurama, made me seal a good half, actually more, of my potential away in the form of these seals. He lifted his shirt to show the extra seals on top of the eight trigrams. But last night I altered it, and added these. Pulled up his sleeve to show five seals on each forearm. Each seal is a faster way to access some of my abilities, said Naruto. With all the seals as they are now, I am at or slightly above Sasuke's level that I'm not sure about how high I'd be with my full potential. Maybe mid to upper level at best added Naruto in his head. Okay, that answers a few of my questions. Goodness Minato-sensei, I wish you were here to witness this, your son is great. What am I gonna do for training? The blonde asked. You're going to make 40 clones, 20 will work on water walking, and 15 will work on taijutsu and speed, while the last 5 and yourself will work with me on something," said Kakashi. What is that? said Naruto. Kakashi tossed him a slip of paper. Put some chakra into that. It was one week later and Team 7 was waking up to go to the bridge. Well, most of Team 7. There was one blonde still snoozing away when everyone was ready to leave. Should we wake him up? asked Sakura. No, let him sleep. I almost killed him yesterday, said Kakashi, to which Sakura blanched. What the hell? she said. It's just training. I'm gonna train Sasuke the same way soon, said Kakashi. Hell yeah, thought Sasuke. Sakura slumped her shoulders and thought. I feel really left out. Maybe now she'll start being more serious, she's improved, but she needs just a little bit more thought Kakashi as he noticed her disappointed appearance. He then spoke. Anyways, do you two have your gear ready? Yes, said Sasuke and Sakura together. They left out, heading straight to the bridge. Tsunami called out for them to wait. She ran over and handed them some bags. Here, don't forget your lunches she said. Thanks, they all said as they each took one and headed for the bridge. Later, Naruto started to come too. He was having such a nice dream and the damn bright sunlight just had to ruin it. Wait, it was really bright. Oh shit he thought as he jumped up. He looked outside to the sun and sure enough, he had really overslept. He ran out of the room to find his team, only to find that they had already left for the bridge. Damn it, he thought. They left about two hours ago. You were still asleep. They didn't want to wake you, said Tsunami. Damn it, yelled Naruto. They're gonna do guard duty without me. He ran out of the door in the blink of an eye. As he was leaving, he made sure to leave a shadow clone hanging as a rock on the path to the bridge builder's house. He was later jumping from branch to branch heading to the bridge. He noticed that there was all sorts of trees and animals that were dead. They looked like they were killed by someone practicing their swordsmanship, which was clearly lacking he noticed. Just then he got the memories from his clone, it had actually been luckily stepped on by one of the thugs. Damn, I thought they might try something like this. He instantly spun around and shot off towards the house he had left not five minutes ago. When he arrived he saw the two thugs pulling Tsunami out. Then they were held up by Inari. He flew into action. He made three clones. Two were in Shuriken, and one was replaced with Tsunami. When the two thugs turned around, they saw a Naruto clone. What the, they said. Hi, said Naruto from behind them. As they turned around, they swung their swords. HM, they are slow. I won't have to do what I planned. This is easy, he quickly thought. In a flash, he used his short stature to his advantage as he slipped under their blades, which flew over his head and caused the thugs to overextend and become unbalanced. Naruto pulled out two kunai and dug them into the thugs' necks. Their eyes widened as the pain and surprise they felt could be easily seen in the windows to their dwindling souls. They choked on their own blood for a few seconds as they collapsed and convulsed a little on the ground. Inari was wide-eyed. 
It was over so fast, said Inari. Yup, most fights are decided in the first few seconds, said Naruto. But how, said Inari. It's just like this place. The first move that did was to kill your father. This pushed your people into weakness. In a sense, his first move almost won the fight, said Naruto. Almost asked Inari. What do you mean? We're here now, said Naruto, but I gotta go to the bridge. Wait, said Inari. Naruto paused. Why would you do all this for me? I've been awful to you, said Inari. Because my life's goal is to be Hokage. I will lead the village full of my precious friends. I would never stand by as a nation is made to bow to greedy selfish nonsense. Also, think about this for yourself. The life that this nation is living is not life at all. It's nothing. If you call this life, then I call you ignorant. Don't you remember the happiness before the time came? Don't you remember what your father protected and died for? Asked Naruto. Yeah, he died. Gato is too strong, said Inari. Is only as strong as you let him be. Imagine if more people had opposed your father. That is why you should fight to get that happier time back. If you stand up and fight, the worst you can do is go down fighting as a hero. At least make it hard to rule you, he said. Inari stood there speechless as Naruto walked away. A little while later at the bridge. Sakura was in a complete and utter panic. Sasuke was fighting that hunter Nin in some strange dome thing, and her sensei was being held back from helping Sasuke Zabuza. Not to mention the fact that she was the only standing guard of the... What if someone else attacked? Just then she decided I can't take any more of this she threw a kunai into the dome of ice mirrors so Sasuke could use it, but the hunter Nin caught it by extending out of one of the mirrors. Just then a shuriken flew in from somewhere and hit the ninja in the mask, knocking him down. A cloud of smoke appeared and Naruto made a big noisy introduction. He was about to make a shadow clone when Zabuza threw shuriken at him. He pulled out a kunai and knocked each of them away. But one of them had a shadow shuriken behind it. The hunter Nin used it to knock it away. Just then, Sasuke tried to throw a kunai at the distracted hunter Nin, who simply dodged it and said he hadn't forgotten about Sasuke. At the same time Naruto snuck into the dome of ice mirrors to ask. So, what's the info on this guy's abilities? What the, you should have stayed out there and attacked from the outside too, he's super fast inside here, replied Sasuke, getting the hunter Nin's attention again. Idiot, that's a shadow clone outside, why did you think I would use such a big noisy introduction, it was to distract them, and you just ruined it said Naruto. You did well to distract me like that, said the hunter Nin, still standing outside of the dome. But it won't happen again. Huh, said Sakura as she saw another Naruto inside the dome. Oh, so that means. The hunter Nin threw it into a vital spot to destroy the clone that was outside of the dome of ice mirrors. It was a distraction thought everyone. Good, I thought he had slipped backwards in abilities there for a minute thought Kakashi. So, why don't we get started? said Zabuza. I thought you'd never ask, said Kakashi. They start their fight just like in the main storyline. Shall we begin? said the hunter Nin. Sure, said Naruto. He turned to Sasuke. So just how fast is this guy? he asked. You'll see, said Sasuke. That's when the hunter Nin started unleashing a flurry of attacks that seemed to come from all directions at one time. Holy shit this guy is really fast he thought. I gotta release a couple of my relay seals he thought about two of his seals. He thought about releasing them and felt a surge of his abilities. His muscles, which had been previously restricted due to the seal, were now restricted about half as much. Also, he had put a seal on some of his mental abilities including his memory of the brute fist. Now he stood a way better chance. He made a bunch of shadow clones to jump around. This way, he could get a better read on his opponent's abilities while hiding his true abilities unless absolutely necessary. The shadow clones were being destroyed by a very fast blur. He's not as fast as I first thought, 
If I had one more CO release I could see him perfectly alright I'll play your game a little more release I'll see if I can help Sasuke learn a lesson or two. Sasuke, can you follow him? He asked. Kinda quick, make more clones, said Sasuke. Naruto did as asked, he kept one clone next to him to observe Sasuke, while he watched the clones and Hunter Nin as well. To Naruto, after releasing the third seal, the Hunter Nin looked to be moving at regular speed, while his clones and Sasuke moved at a much slower speed. After all the clones were destroyed the Hunter Nin threw a barrage of at them. Naruto noticed one thing, about the seemingly slow projectiles none of these are aimed to kill he let them hit their mark. Alright, I need to let Sasuke develop a little more, if he can get to where he can keep up with this guy. Our team will benefit greatly in the long run but I need to be sure this doesn't get too out of hand he thought as he nodded at Sasuke and made more clones. Just like before, he kept one clone to watch Sasuke, or should he say, Sasuke's eyes. He knew what was most likely happening, he's starting to get his Sharingan he thought. After this barrage of clones was destroyed, the one he kept to watch Sasuke had relayed the message that he saw red in Sasuke's eyes. Okay. That'll be just about it for these little games. All right, Sasuke, I'll take it from here, he said. Like hell you will, I can keep up with him now, he said. Sorry, Sasuke, he said as he suddenly appeared next to him and kicked him all the way back to Sakura. Help protect them, he yelled. Damn you, you nonsense, yelled Sasuke. Now do you want to start the real fight, Hunter Nin? he asked. That would be best, said the Hunter Nin. Well, shall we? The Hunter Nin then tried to go from mirror to mirror and throw the... However, Naruto was keeping up with him, forcing him to move to the next mirror before he could release the... This is not good. He's keeping me on the defensive, thought the Hunter Nin. How can you keep up with me all of a sudden, before you couldn't keep up at all? One word, deception, said Naruto. With Kakashi... You know, that blonde is gonna die, he doesn't stand a chance against Haku. I've shaped him and his bloodline limit into the ultimate weapon. He is even stronger than me, said Zabuza. Yeah, that may be my student is very exceptional as well, he is full of surprises. I wouldn't be surprised if he already had a plan to win, said Kakashi. Hmm, I bet the little twerp doesn't really know anything about elemental affiliation he said. Actually, said Kakashi. Flashback. Put your chakra into that, he said. Naruto caught it, then looked at it, then said. What the hell is this? Just do it, it'll show your elemental affinity, he said. Naruto put his chakra into it. What happened next was kinda crazy. Well, that's interesting, said Kakashi. Flashback end. That's impossible, yelled Zabuza. That's impossible, yelled Zabuza. It's not impossible, just highly unlikely, corrected Kakashi. Haku, you better be careful, thought Zabuza. Flashback. Well, that's interesting, said Kakashi. What is it, sensei? asked the blonde. Well, it seems you have a very strong primary affinity for wind. But your strong secondary affinities are all the other ones, said Kakashi, but finished in his head, I'm not even going to tell you yet what that last elemental affinity is. Flashback ends. Meanwhile with Naruto and Haku. Deception. Yes, the very most fundamental tool of a ninja. You have played it well. Shall we start? I style, piercing blades of death, said Haku. Naruto felt the air pressure around him shift, telling him to get the hell out of the way. Oh shit he thought as he jumped back. Just then a many spears of ice formed out of thin air right where he was. How the hell did he avoid that? I've killed a low level with that move. How strong is this kid, thought Haku. I wonder how much your ice can hold up. Wind style, cutting blades. Naruto took a deep breath and let it out. Hundreds of blades of air came out towards the Hunter Nin, who jumped to another mirror to avoid it. When the Hunter Nin got there he saw a giant fireball coming at him. What, he thought. 
He shifted to the mirror directly to his left. You have fire as well as wind? Asked Haku. Yup, replied the blonde. And they go together so well. Wind style, great gust of fury. A powerful gust of wind came out and hit the fireball increasing its intensity causing it to actually start melting the ice mirror. Damn it, thought the hunter Neen, even though I'm not in that mirror, it will weaken my chances of winning, I need to start going for the kill now. The hunter Neen stepped out of the ice mirror. Water style, great wave blast. A wave of water came out and hit the fireball, but because of the intense heat, the water was evaporating into steam before it hit the fireball. But once it left the heat of the fireball, the lower temperature inside the ice dome turned it more into mist than steam, meaning it would lay low and not lift up out of the way. Which is exactly what the hunter Neen wanted. Damn it, Naruto said then he thought, wait, I can just use another wind and he had to roll to his left to dodge the ground that littered the ground where he just was. Damn. He's trying to kill he had to jump again, me now shit, he's not giving me any time to make any hand signs to do my great guess let me think. Jumps out of the way of Kanai this time he's getting really serious now the blonde observed. Standing in a mirror a little ways away, the fake hunter Neen thought the superheated fireball and my water worked perfectly to blind him. I won't let him get the chance to make seals to make a wind to get rid of this mist, thought Haku. There, he said as he threw Shuriken this time. I will stay useful to Zabuzavan if it has to kill you, Naruto. This time the hunter Neen heard the Shuriken he threw, at neck level, dig into flesh. You put up a great fight, you had great promise, but you were cut down in the... He heard a poof. Oh shit, he thought. Wind style, great gust, said Naruto. Hey, you didn't even notice me make a shadow clone in that mist. I didn't even need to use a hand sign. I need to get serious this time, said Haku as he lifted up his sleeve and undid a strap. Then those straps fell to the ground with a loud thud. I will show you what true speed is. The blonde thought, really, I have my own as he touched his wrists to release the seals there and then bent down to touch his ankle seals to undo that weight. And then he undid the ones on his chest and waist. Bring it on no face, yelled Naruto. Just then he made the hand seals, and used much more chakra. Wind style, slicing wind blades. The blades of wind swept out at all the mirrors, and Haku was forced to jump backwards and out of the dome of mirrors. Every mirror was sliced in half and subsequently shattered. Damn it thought the hunter need no matter he said as he pulled out a bunch of. He jumped to the left as a fireball came from Sasuke's direction. He thought, now can you keep me up without my weight? He said as he started towards Sasuke at unbelievable speeds. Oh shit, thought Naruto as he saw Haku going towards Sasuke. He took off after Haku but knew he wouldn't make it in time. Unless that fourth relay seal breaks, he thought in less than the blink of an eye. Sasuke heard it before he saw it. Naruto was standing in front of him, visibly shaking. Dobe, what's wrong? He asked. Naruto stepped back and fell over. There was a lodge deep in his heart. Naruto yelled at both Sasuke and Sakura. Remember, Sasuke was kicked over towards Sakura. He valued your life more than his, said Haku. He still didn't let his guard down. Such a shame. Sasuke knelt down and held Naruto. Why did you do that, dope? I don't know why, because... Poof. Haku thought not surprising and then jumped up out of the way of Naruto as he appeared in front of him, slicing with a kunai. He had enough time to get here, make a shadow clone, and hide all without me noticing him. What the hell is this kid? Thought Haku to himself aloud. A nightmare, whispered Naruto from behind him. Haku's eyes widened and he jumped forward doing a front handspring so that his feet would hopefully catch Naruto in the chin. Too slow, said Naruto from in front of him as Naruto smashed his fist into Haku's face, sending him rolling yards away. He hits dot harder than Zabuza-sama thought Haku. On my fist, what the hell is the mask made out of dot hell? Naruto thought, I say hell too much. No you don't, said QB. Shut the hell up, said Naruto. I take back my previous statement sweat dropped. Oh hell you, said the blonde to the fox. 
Exactly the fox sweat dropped. Haku stood up and Naruto launched forward, ready to plant a kanai in Haku's forehead. But when the mask fell off and he actually saw that it was Haku, he stopped. Why do you hesitate, Naruto? Kill me! I am no longer of use to Zabuza-sama. I am a tool that has lost its purpose, a hammer with a broken handle. You killing me would be a coup de grace, said Haku. But you're my friend, said Naruto. Flashback. Naruto collapsed on the ground, panting. Damn that Kakashi gives me these scrolls but just leaves and says, Use shadow clones, god this tired me out. He then proceeded to pass out. He awoke to someone with their fingers on his neck. He shot up and grabbed the person and put a kunai to their throat. He then came to his senses and asked, What were you doing? You were really bruised up. I just wanted to see if you were still alive, so I was checking your pulse, said the girl. Hesitantly the blonde released the young beauty. Why are you out here exhausting yourself? asked the girl. I'm on a mission, but more importantly why is a pretty girl like you out here? said the blonde. Oh the life of a ninja must be so hard, and I'm just getting herbs to heal my master, he's gotten terribly sick, said the girl. Eh, I manage. It's actually quite exhilarating when you think about it, said the blonde. Why did you choose to be a ninja? asked the girl. So that I can gain the respect of the village to become and protect all the ones that are precious to me. He said thinking of all his friends, and especially Hinata. I see, I have a similar goal in life, said the girl. Really? asked them. Yeah, I want to help my master achieve his goals, whatever they may be. He saved me from my loneliness, said the girl. Really, that's exactly what my friends did for me, said the blonde. If it weren't for them, I don't know where I would be. Indeed, I wonder if you would like to be my friend, asked Haku. Sure you bet, I promise that when I'm here you can come and live in the Leaf Village. Of course you'd be able to, you're just a civilian anyways, laughed the blonde. The girl started laughing too, although she felt uneasy. Well I'd better get back to my master, by the way I am a boy. What? She was almost as cute as Hinaheim, he thought. Flashback end. Yes, we are friends, Naruto. But my life has no meaning anymore, please let my death be at the hands of one of my friends, said Haku. But why is that so messed up, said the blonde. On the other side of the bridge, was being held down by half a dozen dog summons. Kakashi was about to unleash his Chiori, but they were interrupted by a loud tapping on the ground. They all, including Naruto and Haku, looked over to see Gato with an army of thugs behind him. Well, 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 it seems like you really were too costly. I hired these goons and this other stronger ninja for half the cost of you, said. Oh shit, said Kakashi and Naruto. The man to Gato's right was in a black coat with red clouds. He looked at the leaf ninja. So how is the leaf? And looked at Sasuke. And you brother? Oh shit thought Naruto, we're dead now. Sasuke was about to break it towards Itachi but Naruto caught his arm. He'll eat you alive, don't be hastily stupid, said Naruto. Sasuke forcefully removed his hand. I have to kill him, I have to. You will, just not now, not yet. You aren't strong enough yet, you need more time, said Naruto. Whatever, said Sasuke as they all formed around Tizuna to protect him. Zabuza spoke. Well, Kakashi, I guess this means we're not enemies anymore. As you can see, I am no longer employed by Gato. Haku then appeared next to Zabuza. I agree, said Kakashi. So, it appears you and I are nearly out of chakra, and so is Haku. Naruto and Sasuke look a little tired and we're facing a fresh S-ranked criminal. We're messed up. I like the way you put it, said Zabuza. Kakashi quickly took out enough soldier pills and gave one each to Zabuza, Haku, Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura. Then took one himself. Kakashi then spoke to Itachi. To answer your question, the leaf is just fine. And I'm sure your brother is doing fine, so why don't you run along Itachi? 
I'm afraid I can't do that, Kakashi-san. I must fulfill this mission for the money, said Itachi. Listen, guys, this is gonna sound crazy, but do not. And I mean do not look Itachi in the eyes. It'll be all over if you do, said Kakashi. The genin nodded. Shall we begin? said Itachi. A thug coughed and then Zabuza, Kakashi, and Itachi all disappeared. A thick mist spread in the genin, who were now joined by Haku, relaxed knowing that the mist was not intended to be used to kill them. The sounds of an intense battle could be heard, and then Kakashi came into sight, skidding on the ground to a stop in front of them. Kakashi-sensei! yelled Sakura as she tried to run to him. No, yelled Naruto as he held her from going to his. That's not Kakashi-sensei, said Naruto. What, she turned and saw Kakashi stand up and turn into Itachi. This is just an Earth clone, but it should be more than enough to handle you, said Itachi. Sasuke screamed, I'm gonna kill you, and ran at Itachi. He swung but Itachi easily caught his hand and then held Sasuke up by his collar and brutally slugged him in the face. Then kneed him in the stomach and then elbowed him in the back of the neck. Pathetic, you are being a disgrace to the Uchiha name, said Itachi dropping Sasuke's unconscious frame to the ground. He was about to punch him again when his fist was caught by a hand. He noticed he was now looking into the face of a blonde-haired kid. Naruto-kun, you really shouldn't look me in the eyes, he said as he activated his Mangekyo Sharingan and said, Sukuyumi. Naruto appeared in a new realm of time and existence. The skies were red and he was tied to a cross. Itachi appeared with a katana in his hand and began to torture him. He would slide the blade into his stomach, twist it, then heat the blade. After what seemed like hours Itachi said, You're holding up well, better than most. Just then Itachi turned into a bunch of crows that all shoved themselves down his throat. He then woke back up. It had all happened in the blink of an eye. Naruto was still there holding Itachi's fist in his hands. He had one thought, why did he let me go? Why did he not kill me? Then Naruto thought, fifth and sixth relay seals, release. A surge of power went through him as he tightened his grip on Itachi's fist, pulled him in and punched him as hard as he could. Itachi flew away and rolled on the ground. The mist parted slightly to reveal Itachi standing while wiping the blood from his mouth. It seems you are the strongest of your group, huh Naruto-kun? Maybe, maybe not, said Naruto. He put his hands together in the familiar sign and yelled, Multi-shadow clone, and 500 Naruto's appeared. Those won't work on me, Naruto, said Itachi. That's when all the clones rushed him. Itachi was cutting through them like they were nothing. Then one clone held onto Itachi's hand. What? said Itachi. Boom, said the clone as it exploded. Itachi was thrown into the air. Naruto jumped high. He was able to because he wasn't using his seals or weights, and laid a solid brute fist strike to the base of the spine of Itachi. Naruto pulled out a kunai and was about to cut Itachi's throat before the missing Nin reached back and grabbed Naruto by the back of the neck, pulled him in while bringing his fist up and punched Naruto in the face. Then he grabbed Naruto by the shoulders and pulled Naruto's face to his knees. Naruto had one thought, ow as he flew back to, and crashed into, the earth. Itachi landed gracefully. Damn he's strong as hell said Naruto in his mind. He's an Uchiha, and an elite Uchiha at that. This guy is a serious brat, be careful. Said the Kyuubi in Naruto's mind. Will do, thanks Q said Naruto. Well Naruto-kun, how about we? He moved his head to the side as Sasuke's fist came whizzing by his face. Itachi brought his elbow back roughly, catching Sasuke in midair. Sasuke was visibly shaken as spit and blood left his mouth. Itachi squinted his eyes in a hateful glare, pathetic. He turned around and grabbed Sasuke by the collar again. Now I'll put you in suku. Itachi was punched in the back of the head by Naruto, sending Itachi to the ground, dropping Sasuke. Didn't they tell you not to turn your back to an opponent? said Naruto. Sasuke stood next to Naruto, holding his aching stomach. Dobe, you want to team up? 
asked Sasuke. Nah, shit genius, said Naruto. Sasuke rolled his eyes. Formation A, said Naruto. Sasuke just nodded. Sasuke ran at Itachi and engaged him in taijutsu, but it lasted five seconds. Which was enough because as Itachi was just about to put Sasuke into Tsukuyami he found himself staring into the air. He felt a sharp pain in his stomach and looked down to see Naruto with his fist through his stomach. I see, so you did a substitution with Sasuke, and since you're so much shorter I miss you eyes and you had your fist pulled back before you made the swap. He began to crumple. Good teamwork, said Itachi. Kakashi had just missed Itachi with a Chidori strike. But it was just a distraction for Zabuza to try to cleave off Itachi's head. Keyword being try. You two are actually keeping up, said Itachi. Kakashi went through hand signs while Zabuza disappeared into the mist again. Water style, water hurricane, said Kakashi. A giant wave of water and wind went towards Itachi. Itachi jumped back in order to put some distance, but he had made a mistake. He backed right into the edge of Zabuza's sword range as the demon of the mist was bringing down his blade. Itachi bent forward onto his hands and did a handspring backwards to kick Zabuza in the chin, sending him flying in the opposite direction. However, Zabuza disappeared, revealing it to be a water clone. Shit thought Itachi as he just barely had time to dodge a downward slash from Zabuza. Itachi did hand signs quickly and sent a fireball at Kakashi, who dodged to the left. He dodged, right into an explosive note. His eyes widened as it set off and flung him back to where his students were. Formation Delta 3 Omega The students nodded, knowing that only their real sensei would know the jargon of their team formations. Naruto made enough clones so that when they hanged they would all look the same as him, Haku, Sasuke, Sakura and Tizuna. Then the group leapt back to the ground before the bridge. Sasuke laid some explosive notes on the ground around them as Naruto did some hand signs and a giant dome of earth surrounded them, and then disappeared back underground. Kakashi jumped back into the fray to try to take advantage of Itachi's turn back only for Itachi to turn into a log when Kakashi buried a kanai in the back of his head. Behind you, said Itachi. Kakashi turned into the katana that Itachi was holding. Such a pity, said Itachi. But then Kakashi erupted into smoke. Kagebanshin, said Itachi. Just then Zabuza appeared mid-downstroke right beside Itachi. This caused Itachi to dodge backwards. While in the air Itachi heard the sounds of birds chirping and turned to see Kakashi preparing to ram the Chidori into his back and chest when he neared. Itachi opened his eyes wider and a black shell appeared between him and Kakashi, causing Kakashi to be pushed back. Itachi was now standing right between the two jonin. Kakashi and Zabuza were not faring well. They looked bloody and bruised, but Itachi was panting as well. These two elite were still able to push him, but he was still far in the favor. Just then he got his memories from the clone back and said, I guess my true mission is done, farewell for now. He collapsed and turned into another dead man. Zabuza and Kakashi walked over and Kakshi said, So it wasn't really him all along, just a dead body with his abilities and under his control? I guess I don't really know for sure, said Zabuza. The two made it over to the underground hiding spot of the Genin and Haku. One of the explosive notes hung, revealing it to be a Naruto clone. He asked, Is Itachi gone or something? Thankfully, yes, said Kakashi. The clone nodded and dispelled itself, sending the memories back to the real Naruto underground. The two made their way back over to Naruto and the others. Well, I guess that is enough for today, said Kakashi. Did you forget about me, said Gato? That sissy Uchiha may have left, but you're all dog-tired and my little army here is just itching to let out some frustrations but they are costly too. So if you wouldn't mind could you take out about half of them with you okay thanks, said Gato. Well I'm out of soldier pills, said Kakashi. I have plenty left, said Naruto as he made over 200 clones. 
Kakashi stood up and made twenty clones as Zabuza prepared his giant blade while Haku pulled out, and Sasuke pulled out a kunai and Sakura pulled out a kunai but stayed next to Tazuna. Zabuza left first as he dashed into the crowd and gutted Gado, sending him flying over the bridge side into the water below. Zabuza then ran back to his team, killing a few men on his way back. Sorry, I just couldn't stand him. I had to kill him quickly, says Zabuza. It's quite all right, said Kakashi. So I guess we're done, Sakura interrupted. Hey, they killed the boss. Who's gonna pay us now? I know, let's plunder that little village over there. We'll kill the men and kids, take the money and food and the women. Right, when he finished his sentence he looked down to see a kanai coming out of his chest. He looked forward to see the still outstretched hands of Naruto. That was fast said the thug as he collapsed to the ground. Naruto pulled out two more kunai, and then a boat landed in between the two groups. They all turned and saw all the townspeople, led by Inari. Inari said, You can try, but we're not gonna let you do anything you slime balls. All the thugs turned tail and ran, fighting over each other to get to the boat. Now we're done with them, said Kakashi. Finally, time to go back into hiding said Zabuza. Kakashi, I have a favor to ask of you. What is it? asked Kakashi. I want you to take Haku back to Konoha with you, said Zabuza. What? yelled Haku. You can get better training and be safer there. I would go with you, but I don't think that Konoha would let me in with me being a missing Nin and all, said Zabuza. Actually, we may be able to work out something with the Hokage especially if you have any information on the Mizukage," said Kakashi. Hey, we can talk about this later, I'm hungry, let's go back to Tazuna's house and have supper," yelled Naruto. Everyone was all too happy to nod their heads. The bridge was now complete and the group was about to leave. Kakashi and the group had convinced Sabuza to join them in going home to Konoha. You can cry now said Naruto. No, you can if you want to, said Inari with tears in his eyes. We'll be sure to come back and visit you, okay? said Naruto with tears in his eyes as well. Sakura rolled her eyes and grabbed Naruto by the ear and drug him away as their group left. So what will you call the bridge? asked Tsunami. It is our bridge to better times I think we should call it the Great Naruto Bridge, said Tizuna. Sounds magnificent to me, said Tsunami. The group was walking down the road to Konoha. Haku-chan, how do you take care of your hair so well? Said Sakura as Haku blushed. You know Haku is actually a boy, said Naruto. What? Really? Said Sakura as Haku's blush deepened. What are you talking about brat? Haku is a girl, said Zabuza. Then Naruto told of the encounter with Haku as Haku's face grew redder and redder. Naruto just barely dodged the giant sword of Zabuza. She's like a daughter to me, and you were having impure thoughts, weren't you? No, I swear it, I have a life partner, said Naruto. She's your life partner, exclaimed Zabuza as he started chasing Naruto. No, that's not what I meant, Dot Okami help me said Naruto as he ran and the rest of the group chuckled at his expense. In a dark cave there stood nine figures. Seven were holograms. The tall blue band turned to the awakening Itachi. So how was the Jinchuriki? asked Kisame. He is developing quite well faster than most. Even faster than my brother. He may be a threat, should we take him now? asked Itachi. A figure with purple, ringed, eyes turned to Itachi. No, he is still no bother. This was simply to see his development, nothing more. We are still in phase one of our plan for world domination. Just be sure to keep it in mind that the Jinshurikis can be quite strong. Yes, Leader Sama, said the group. It had been a rather pleasant trip back to Konoha. Naruto and the kids talked animatedly while Kakashi read his book and Zabuza sharpened his sword glaring at Naruto for the first 30 minutes before shaking his head and starting up a conversation with the only other so they could share in each other's exploits over the years. 
About halfway the group stopped in order to rest and have lunch. Sabuza sat down next to Naruto. Sabuza still staring straight ahead, asked Naruto. So where'd you learn to fight like that? I know it wasn't from Kakashi. Don't tell him brat, said Kyuubi. Nah shit furball. I just trained with weighted seals and watched the spa at times I don't know, it just kinda came naturally," said the blonde as he scratched the back of his neck. Biggest lie ever thought Naruto. Whatever you say kid, said Zabuza. Just then it seemed like a light bulb turned on in Sakura's head. She turned to Naruto and said, Wait a second, didn't you say earlier that you have a life partner? Naruto gulped his food down and started sweating. Well, me and Hinata-chan are really close, but we haven't really made anything official yet. I was just trying to get Sabusa to stop chasing me, said Naruto. Apparently that worked for Sakura as she nodded and turned back to her food. Nephew, that was a close one thought the blonde. Naruto felt someone sit down next to him and turned to see Haku. Hey Haku, how are you? I'm well, thank you Naruto-kunsei, can I ask you a favor? She asked. Yes, yeah, sure, what do you need? Asked Naruto. I could really use some help getting to know the village. If your Hokage approves of us becoming members of the village, would you please give me a little tour? Asked the ice user. You bet, I'll even introduce you to Hinata-chan, he said. Hinata-chan, damn it, she thought with a sad look. I still won't give up, I can't wait to meet her, she said. Yeah, I bet you'll get along with her a whole lot. She's very kind and gentle, just like you are Haku-chan, said the blonde. She smiled and said, It'll be a lot of fun. Later that day, the group of ninja entered the gates. Kakashi walked over and signed them in with the guards before coming back to the group and saying, All right, everyone. Usually I would just go and give the mission report myself, but seeing as we have two new additions to our group, we need to take everyone so their input can be heard. The group nodded. The blonde said, Gramps better let them stay. I'll be pissed at him if he doesn't. Kakashi smiled. Maybe he will be Naruto. Maybe he will. The group had just entered the Hokage's office. Oh Kakashi-san, I see you returned from your mission to the wave. What brings these other two ninja? Asked the third. The group of ninja went on to recount the events in the wave. When everyone was done there was a pause. Do you understand the possible political implications for taking in a missing mean such as the demon of the mist? Said the Hokage. Silence. What if by giving these two asylums we start a war with the most, what would you have me do? Said the Hokage. Silence. Naruto turned his head to the ground, as well as Haku, Sasuke and Sakura. Luckily for you, every single downed head shot up. The previous Mizukage stepped down due to political upheaval. Apparently, there were many who were sympathetic to your cause, Zabuza-san. Did you know they removed you from the bingo book and took away your missing mean status? Said the Hokage. Zabuza's and Haku's eyes widened. So that leaves you with the decision. Would you like to go home to the Miss Village or stay here in the leaf? Asked the Hokage. We will stay here said Zabuza. Haku nodded. Okay, I will be letting Zabuza join temporarily as a special until he can meet the village's standards for the admittance of new level shinobi. Haku I will place on a genin team that recently had a member be diagnosed with a condition that left her unable to continue life as a shinobi, said the Hokage. Zabuza and Haku bowed and said in unison, Thank you Hokage-sama. He waved his hand and said, that is all, you are all dismissed. If I may have a word with you, Hokage-sama, said Kakashi. You may, Kakashi-san please stay, the rest are dismissed, he said. The rest of the group left. Now what do you need, Kakashi? asked the Hokage. It is about my team. First off, it appears that Sasuke has activated, at least partially, his Sharingan, said Kakashi. Well that is good. I would like for you to train him in the use of the Sharingan, said the Hokage. Kakashi nodded. Also, it appears Naruto is quite the ninja. He has practiced deception and carried it out to a T. 
Whatever do you mean? Asked the Hokage. He seems to have been trained by his prisoners, said Kakashi. I know, said the Hokage. Kakashi's eyes widened. What? I can see many things about Kakashi, like how you changed to buy the books. By the way, have you seen the last one? It's really a masterpiece, said the Hokage. Yeah, I'm halfway through it now, said Kakashi. Anyways, do you have any idea how strong Naruto might be? That I am not sure of, said the Hokage as he took out a pipe and lit it up. Kakashi-san, do you think Minato-san would be proud of his son? Do you think he would approve of how his son has been treated? Asked the Hokage. He would be beyond proud of his son. To think at the moment he could be stronger than Minato was at his age. However, I can't say he'd approve of how the village has treated the kid, said Kakashi, bowing his head to the ground in shame. The civilian council had demanded the QB be killed. They had had a hard fight just to get Naruto to be able to live. Naruto has had such a hard life. The civilian council had in effect tied the hands of the Hokage and made it to where no clan or ninja could adopt Naruto. If they hadn't, Kakshi would have adopted Naruto himself. The civilian's rule was a concession for the Hokage's decree that forbade anyone from talking about the Kyubi. I know how you feel Kakashi, said the Hokage. If it weren't for that damn council, those nonsenses have no right in interfering with the business of Shinobi, said Kakashi. That is very true, said the Hokage. But at the time Naruto was just a baby and wasn't a Shinobi. It was all I could do to keep them from having him executed and to put that law into place. I know, it's just that sometimes that council does more harm than good. Why can't they see that Naruto himself is not the Kyubi, that he is the prison that keeps the prisoner jailed? If it weren't for Naruto we'd all be killed by the fox, said Kakashi. It's scary, Kakashi. Fear is one of the greatest downfalls of man. Man fears what he does not understand, and that fear brings out hatred. They are scared for their lives because they don't understand him or his situation. They just see a fox sealed in him and think that if they kill him they will kill the fox, which is entirely untrue. It will make the fox free, only to return in 100 years, said the Hokage. Silence. How strong do you think Kakashi is? Sarutobi asked. I honestly have no idea, but he's definitely stronger than Sasuke is, said Kakashi. I see, said the Hokage. A good way across the village Naruto, Sakura, Haku, and Sasuke were all taking a nice stroll around the village when both Naruto and Sasuke sneezed. I didn't do it, shouted Naruto as the others chuckled. So where are we going now? We've been to the ramen stand. We've been to the ninja supply store, where else do you guys want to show me? Asked Haku. Well, I was thinking of taking you to see Hinata-chan, that is, if she's home. Said Naruto. Ah, uh, Naruto misses his little life partner so much. Taunted Sakura. Hey, I told you that we are just friends, well best friends to be more accurate. Said the blonde. Sure, whatever you say. Said Sakura. I can't wait, I hope she's as nice as you say she is, said Haku. She's so nice you'd think she couldn't harm a butterfly, said Sasuke. You'd think, said Haku. She can kick, said Sasuke. Yup, he learned that the hard way, said Naruto. Yeah, I did, said Sasuke, remembering the time she nearly beat him in their little tournament. She had still thoroughly whipped him. He just got away with the win. They continued to chat about small things until they reached the Hyuga household. Naruto stepped up to the door and knocked on it. A few moments later, a guy not much older than Naruto opened the door. He glared at Naruto and said, What do you want, failure? To see Hinata-chan, we want to introduce her to a new friend of ours, said Naruto. Ah, I see. A failure should always hang out with failure except maybe the Uchiha, said the Hyuga boy. Did you know the first Hokage was considered a failure in his early childhood, and later he became known as quite possibly the greatest ninja to ever live, only being rivaled by Uchiha Madara and possibly the fourth Hokage? 
Also, Jiraiya of the Sanin was a failure as a child, and he's one of the strongest ninja in the world at the moment, said Naruto. Hmph, whatever, said Hyuga. Niji, what are you doing? asked an older voice as Hayashi appeared in the doorway behind Niji. Just answering the door Hayashi-sama, said Niji. Okay, well, would you please go tell Hinata that she has company? Niji nodded and turned to leave, sending one last glare back at the group of younger Genin. My apologies for my nephew's rude behavior, said Hayashi. None taken, said Naruto. I know that not all of the Hyuga are that arrogant, said Naruto. This made a frown cross Hayashi's face as he knew that most of the Hyugas, himself included, were overly arrogant and that it proved to be one of their worst faults. A minute or two later Hinata appeared in the doorway. Hey Naruto-kun, hey everyone, may I leave with your father? She asked. Hayashi simply nodded. Hinata went to leave. Naruto said. Hey Hayashi-sama, can I ask you a question? Asked Naruto. That you may, said the Hyuga leader. In private, he said, turning to the group. They nodded and walked down the street a little ways, each wondering what Naruto would need to talk to Hayashi about. What is it that you need, Naruto-san? Asked Hayashi. I was wondering. You see, a few months ago, when you chased me around your garden with the family sword, said Naruto. Yes, said Hayashi. Before that you said you'd like to have kids from a Namikaze one day, what did you mean? I'm an Uzumaki, not a Namikaze, said the blonde. I slipped up back then, didn't I, Hayashi thought. You just look a lot like Minato from when we were boys. Him and I were really good friends. As were my wife and his love interest. Who knows, Naruto, maybe you are a Namikaze. A secret heir to the Namikaze and Uzumaki clans. Yeah, like that would ever happen. Sounds like a fairy tale to me, said Naruto. Indeed it does, said Hayashi, smiling. Naruto thought he was smiling at the ridiculousness of the fairy tale, but really Hayashi was smiling at just how wrong Naruto was. I believe your group of friends are growing impatient, said Hayashi. Right, I'll see you later, Hayashi-sama, said Naruto as he bowed. Well, at least he's trying to be formal. No doubt it's for Hinata Sake, yes. I could really enjoy having grandchildren that have Namike's blood in them. Not only would it make my clan stronger, but it would also strengthen our ties to the village. Once they find out about his heritage, they'll probably love him. The elders will be a problem, though. A problem I need to address, said Hayashi. Naruto made his way back to his group of friends. So Hinata, we wanted to introduce you to a new friend and comrade of ours. H. Hinataheim, this is Hakuchan. Hakuchan, this is Hinataheim, said Naruto. The two girls shook each other's hands and said, It's a pleasure to meet you. So, what do you guys want to do now? asked Sakura. I don't know, said Naruto as he put both hands at the back of his neck. This exposed his forearms showing six of his ten relay seals. He quickly covered it up but it was too late. Naruto, what were those seals? asked Sasuke. What are you talking about Sasuke? I don't have any ink on me, said Naruto. Naruto was facing Sasuke when Sakura, out of nowhere, pulled up one of his sleeves, revealing the three seals on each arm. You mean these? asked Sakura. Damn it. The one good part about these seals is that usually they're invisible. However, once I use them they become visible until enough of my chakra has entered them to lock them again. I'm just glad not all ten got opened. I only had enough time to open six out of my ten. Wow, I wonder how much stronger I would have been. The other negative aspect of the relay seals is that because it is a shortcut to all that chakra and experience, it is very tiresome. If you try to fit a ocean of water through a one-inch diameter pipe in a small amount of time that pipe is gonna fatigue and possibly break. That's the same as my strength. The relay seals are smaller and more convenient to use, but take a higher toll on my body. That is why I slept the entire first of the two weeks we remained in the waves thought the blonde. Then Naruto spoke. Um, these are just some chakra suppressing seals. 
Remember Kakashi Sensei said I have a whole shitload of chakra? The group nodded. Well, that really sucks for chakra control. I mean it's harder to control the flow of a raging river than it is to control the flow of a sink of water, right? So I use these seals to suppress some of my chakra so I can control it better, said Naruto. Oh, okay, so it just makes it to where you can control your chakra better, nothing too fancy, said Sakura. That's literally exactly what I just said thought Naruto then said. Yeah, that's pretty much it. H.N. Well, I'm gonna go home and go to sleep, said Sasuke. I'm tired as hell. Then Sasuke added in his head, How strong are you really, Naruto? Hinata-chan, do you want to go train with me at training ground 7? Asked Naruto. Sure, Naruto-kun, said Hinata. I gotta go tell Ino about our mission, said Sakura. Naruto rolled his eyes. Gossip girl. Hey, I was gonna train with her too said Sakura. Shuri, said Naruto, getting a giggle from Haku and Hinata. Whatever, said Sakura as she walked off. Haku asked, So do you think I could join you two in your training? Hinata and Naruto looked at each other and nodded. Naruto said, Sure. Haku nodded and said, Thank you. The three left and went to training ground seven. Once there, Naruto said, I got an idea. He made several clones. One clone each for Hinata, Haku, and for himself. How about we all train in our taijutsu a little bit? The two girls nodded. Naruto had made these clones with an extra seal painted on them. This seal allowed him to add a little more chakra to the clones to make them more resistant to attacks. He and the clone he was fighting released the first seal main seal, not the first relay seal, accessing small amounts of their brute fist. Then Naruto upped his weight in the resistance band while the clone didn't, putting Naruto at a handicap. Naruto felt that this would cause him to adapt more to the weights. After an hour of taijutsu sparring Naruto let his clones go. He received the memories of each one. Hinata, you're very fast and agile, as are you Haku. The only thing is that both your strikes need to be harder and a little more aggressive. Me, hmm, I need to be a little more agile. He then thought, I need to train some time at my full power so as to still be used to my body when it is at full strength. The girls nodded and Haku said, Well, it's getting late. I'd better go find Zabuza-sama. It was fun training with you. We should do it more often. Then she blushed at what she said. Do not like that Haku Haku thought to herself. Hanada and Naruto nodded and waved goodbye to her. She's really nice, said Hinata. I know, said Naruto. So do you want to go get some food? My treat. My treat, anywhere you want to go. Anywhere, she asked. He gulped and nodded thinking, Gama is about to get real thin. She said, I'm in the mood for some more of that heavenly ramen from Ichiraku. He looked at her like he was gonna kiss her. You're amazing Hinata-chan. She blushed, wow, used to I would have fainted at that compliment. The two made their way to the ramen stand. Naruto-kun, Hinata-chan. It's nice to see you too, Inch, said Tuchi. It's nice to see you too, said Naruto. How have you been, Tuchi-san? asked Hinata. I've been well, so why it be you two lovebirds? asked Tekuhai. The two blushed really deeply before Naruto stuttered. We're not dating yet, we're just best friends. Hinata realized what he said and fainted, her head plopping down on the counter. What the hell, she hasn't fainted like that in forever, said Naruto. Hey Naruto, said Tuchi. Yes, old man, he replied. You said that you and her aren't dating yet, said Tuchi, teasing Naruto. Naruto shot his hands to his mouth. Then he removed them and said, I didn't. Then he just looked at Tuchi with a pleading look that said, Please don't taunt me. I'm already confused enough. Tuchi only nodded. They woke Hinata, who had forgotten what Naruto had said because of her fainting, and the two preteens ordered their ramen. After they ate their fill, which for Naruto was fifteen bowls, they got up, Naruto left a sizable amount of cash on the counter, and they left. 
Naruto walked Hinata back to her home. Once at the door Hinata turned around and hugged Naruto. He was taken by surprise at first but then he hugged her back. You're my best friend Naruto-kun. She said then added in her head I wish I could tell you that I love you, but it's just not the right time will it ever be the right time. You're my best friend too Hinaheim. I don't know where I'd be without you. He said then added in his head, you're my world my sweet. I love you, if only I could tell you. But I, an orphan, am not worth of the love and affection of a girl as sweet, caring, and strong like you. The door opened to reveal Niji. The boy said, Ah, what a sorrowful sight of Lozer's love. Niji! scolded Hayashi appearing behind him. Naruto glared at Niji, what is this guy's problem? He pulled Hinata closer to him. Niji just went, humph, and disappeared. Hayashi shook his head, what will I do with him? Brother, I'm so sorry. Hayashi turned to the two genin who were still holding each other, as if they were in a cheesy romance movie. Hayashi cleared his throat. I believe it is time for you to go to bed, Hinata. Thank you for walking my daughter home, said Hayashi. Hinata said yes, father. As she bowed and ran in the door, she turned back and waved at Naruto, who in turn waved back. Naruto bowed and said, You are most welcome, Lord Hayashi. With that the blonde turned and left. Hayashi stood there. A small smile spread on his usually ice-cold face. Minato, you would be so proud. Back at his apartment Naruto made a shadow clone and got in bed. He instantly fell asleep. About one o'clock in the morning Naruto was startled awake by his clone being destroyed. He sat up quickly prepared to fight. The lights were on and he had a clear view of his attacker. But you're supposed to be dead, muttered Naruto in disbelief. There, standing in his little apartment, was the fourth Hokage himself. But you're supposed to be dead, stuttered Naruto. There, standing in his small apartment, was the fourth Hokage himself. Silence. Can you speak? asked the blonde, cowering behind his blanket. The blonde-haired man smiled. You're so much. He paused. What? asked the blonde genin. The man shook his head and said, That is for another time, Naratoso. How old are you now? I'm twelve, said Naruto. My, my, you've grown so fast. I can't believe it, said the Hokage. What's so hard to believe? Then Naruto got angry. Naruto jumped up, standing on his bed and pointed an accusing finger at the fourth. You sealed the nine tails inside me. Correct. But why me? said Naruto. That is also for another time, said the fourth Hokage. So why are you here? asked the blonde kid. To discuss some things with you, said the fourth. Well dot out with it, said Naruto. How have the villagers treated you? asked the blonde Hokage. Naruto's head fell. Tears started to leak down his whisker-marked cheeks. He looked up his mask disappearing and his liquid soul pouring out of his eyes only to drip off the bottom of his chin and splash salty little fingerprints of years of pain and torture on his arms. The villagers dot they've dot they've dot they've hated me ever since I was a child. They've tried to kill me so many times I've lost count. They've begged for M, my execution. If it weren't for Hokage Jiji, I, I wouldn't be here. I don't even know why I strive to protect them so much. Why should I want to become these evil nonsenses? With every word Minato clenched his fist tighter and tighter until his knuckles resembled the color of the white of his coat. Naruto could have sworn he could hear the fourth's teeth grinding together in his mouth. What's wrong Hokage-sama? Naruto spat out the last part with venom to clearly show his anger at the fourth for sealing the nine tails in him. Oh Naruto Naruto I intended for you to be seen as a hero by this village. It was my dying wish, said the fourth. Yeah, the villagers really messed that up, didn't they? Said Naruto. Hey, watch your mouth, said the fourth. Whatever, she should think you were my dad or something, said the blonde putting his chin in his hand, looking to the side. You know, I actually idolize you. 
I want to be just like you. And oh, I want to be better than you. You are the milestone that I hope, know I need, to one day surpass. In order to do that you're gonna need to be one of the greatest Hokages ever, said the fourth. I know, said Naruto, but now that I think about it, why should I protect them? Dot. Minato hung his head. Why should I help them? They've beaten me. They've tortured me. They've made my life a living hell. And ever since I was a baby. A baby crying out loud, shouted Naruto, tears of anger and hurt spilling down his face. Why, why should I strive for their attention, for their acknowledgement? Why do they deserve it? They don't, said Naruto. In fact, they deserve the opposite, he said. They deserve to die the most horrible and painful death by my hands, said the blonde genin. I should let them out, I should. Just to show them what a true demon is, said Naruto. Minato's head snapped up. Then you'd be proving them right. So it's not like they are ever going to accept me anyways. Hull, why are you crying? Asked Naruto. Dot, that is also for later Naruto. Dot, but answer me this. Dot, what about those people who are already accepting of you? What about those that are your precious people? Asked the fourth. Naruto's eyes grew wide as the faces of Tuchi, I am, Iruka, the third Hokage, Kakashi, Sakura, Sasuke, Sabuza, and Haku, Hayashi, and finally, and most importantly, Hinata all flashed through Naruto's mind. So, what is your verdict now? asked the Hokage. I see now I should focus less on worrying about the village as a whole and only worry about protecting those that are dear to me I've believe believed this all along really. I just lost myself there for a moment in the sorrow and hatred. Naruto shivers. Thank you Hokage-sama for helping me out. You're welcome S. Shinobi of the Leaf, said the Hokage. Naruto, I'm sure you'll do fine. Oh, and by the way, be wary of Jiraiya-sensei, he's a great ninja but a lousy role model, said the. What, are you leaving so soon, but we only just got to talk, said the genin. Yes, I am about to leave you. I need to go now. Naruto, I need you to do one thing for me, said the. What's that? said Naruto. The fourth moved across the room in a flash of yellow and came face to face with Naruto. Wake up. Naruto is upright. He was in a deep sweat. What was that dream? It felt so real. Naruto looked over and noticed that his clone was still in the lotus position, still being trained by QB no doubt. I wonder. He dispelled the clone and got the memories back from the fox. Hey fox, that was a nice training session. That it was Naruto that it was, said the fox in Naruto's mind. Just then a flash bomb came through the window. Naruto had barely had enough time to cover his eyes. As the flash bang went off Naruto felt the presence of an extremely high chakra. While the flash bang was still active Naruto quickly unlocked eight of his relay seals, not wanting to take a chance. To prove his fears true, a figure jumped in the window. This figure exuded power. He had at least as much chakra as Kakashi Sensei. Oh shit what do I do, he thought. Who are you and what are you doing here? Oh we have a brave little fella. You are quite the firecracker aren't you? It matters not whether I tell you my name or not, for you will soon be dead. In fact you can just call me Red Death said the ninja as he pulled out a very intimidating looking katana. Naruto made a couple of clones to go fight him. The Red Death? Oh shit, he's an A-ranked, Jonin level missing mean from IWA thought Naruto, while he's distracted. Ninth and tenth relay seals open, also, weight seals need to be deactivated thought the blonde as he proceeded to take off the weight seals. Naruto felt so strong. Well, since I'm probably gonna die, can I ask you why you're here, how you got here, and how in the world your chakra isn't alerting the N and that you're here? Asked the blonde. The ninja explained. Easy, I was hired for a rather hefty sum by some weird as snake man to come and kill you. As for how I got in, the snake man told me how to get around the defenses, and I have a multi-layer around this room, making it look the same to the outside viewer. Shit, 
Oh well, he thought. The time for talk is over. Now die, said Red Death. The ninja came at Naruto at a speed many would have thought was impressive, but Naruto kept up rather easily. Naruto pulled out a kunai and parried the katana and then threw the kunai. It missed and stuck in the wall behind his opponent. Where the hell are you aiming, kid? said Red Death. Red Death started to go through some hand signs. Water style water sword. A very compressed and powerful stream of water came out of the nin's mouth and sliced Naruto in half. The ninja smirked before. Poof. The ninja's eyes widened, what the hell. Wind style slicing wine, said Naruto as blades of wind cut through the air toward Red Death who jumped back. When did he hear the kanai it was him? But when he subbed with a clone when the flash bang was still in effect this kid is pretty good for his age thought the ninja then he said. It's too bad, you show some promise for someone quite so young. It's too bad I have to kill you. The ninja appeared in front of Naruto bringing his sword down. Naruto, not having a kanai in his hand at the moment, forced chakra into his hands and caught the blade. Then he used the agility and the strength he learned from brute fist to flip over the knee pulling his arm and katana with him so as to put the nin in a hold with his own katana at his neck. Naruto kicked his knees and caused him to buckle forward slightly, then quickly brought the blade around and stabbed the ninja. The ninja was held in place by the blade Naruto was holding in him through his stomach and back. How the hell? started the ninja. I cannot die yet, I have too many goals and too many people to protect, said the blonde. Naruto placed his hand on the Nin's back and said, Wind style, wind cannon, said Naruto as he put a significant amount of chakra into the attack. The wind, true to its name, shot out of Naruto's hand and put a whole six inches in diameter in the middle of the ninja's chest all the way through. Naruto put his foot on the back of the ninja and kicked him off of the katana. Pathetic. You're supposed to be an A-ranked missing. I barely even broke a sweat said Naruto as he picked up the katana's sheath and sheathed the katana. But I think I'll take this fine sword as a spoil of war. The blonde then thought for a moment, unsheathed the sword and separated the nin's head from his body. Can never be too sure, thought the blonde. Naruto went outside and flared his chakra then shot a flare into the sky. Since Red Death was, well, dead, his genjutsu was released and since he flared so much chakra it wasn't too long before Umbu and even the appeared. Naruto-san, what is the matter? asked the Hokage. Naruto cut off the relay seals and started to pant. Inside Red Death killed him I am the best. Then he collapsed to the ground. Naruto awoke in his mindscape. Hey furball, how are you doing? asked the blonde. I'm fine, well as fine as a fox can be when he's sealed inside you said the fox. Whatever, did you see all that? asked the blonde. Yeah I did kid. Those were some pretty good moves. I liked how you finished him off. Thanks, said Naruto. That guy was supposed to be an A-ranked player missing from IWA, but he was pretty easy to kill. Not only are you of Jonin level yourself, but he underestimated you. Which is a fatal mistake obviously. Let that be a lesson to you to never underestimate your opponents, said QB. I know, I know, said the blonde. I think it's time you wake up, said QB. Yeah. Naruto opened his eyes to an intensely bright light. He quickly pulled the pillow from behind his head and covered his eyes with it. He heard snickering. He looked out from under the pillow and saw Hinata sitting in a chair next to him with her head down and her fist clenched in her pants. Also there were Kakashi, Sasuke, Sakura, Iruka, Haku, Sabuza, and the third Hokage who were the ones snickering. Well it seems you're finally awake, said the. Thank goodness, cried out Hinata as she ran and hugged him with tears in her eyes. Naruto looked a little confused. What did I do? They chose to answer. You battled a ninja that was, or by all accounts should have been, out of your league. It's really a miracle that you came out of it alive. That was a relatively famous ninja from IWA that you just killed. I know, it was pretty difficult, said Naruto, 
adding in his head yeah to break a sweat. I'm sure it was, so how in the world did you do it, Naruto? asked Kakashi. Naruto was about to tell them all about his heroic struggle for life when his attention came to the easy breathing of Hinata. She had fallen asleep on his chest. Ah, she's so cute like that he said, wait, what am I thinking, she couldn't possibly love me like that. Yes yeah, sure we're best friends, but she is, for all practical purposes, a princess. Why would she love me, an orphan demon container? Hinata awoke just then to look in his eyes with a look of pleading. I'm so glad you're alive, she said as she got up from his chest, kissed him on the cheek, then fainted back into the chair she was in before. Kakashi took out a small packet of smelling salts and woke Hinata. We wouldn't want you to miss the story, said Kakashi with a nice smile. Sorry, says Hinata. Okay Naruto, so how did you beat the guy again? asked Sasuke. Well it all started when, he retold them of his fight making it more of a struggle than it really was. Wow, that's amazing Naruto, said Hinata. It is impressive, said Kakashi to which Sakura, the and Sasuke nodded. In fact, there was a rather large bounty on his head. I will see to it that the funds are placed in your account Naruto, said the third. The group continued to talk for another ten minutes before everyone needed to leave. Wait, Hokage Gigi. I need to talk to you, said Naruto. Okay, Naruto said the, he nodded to Kakashi and the Cyclops ninja left and the professor came back into the room. What do you need, Naruto-kun? asked the Hokage. To tell you why that ninja was in my room in the first place, said the blonde. Oh yes, I was going to wait until the morning to ask you if you knew why he was there, said the. The blonde nodded and continued. He was hired by a, he put his hands up in quotation marks, snake man. Sarutobi's face turned very serious and dark. Naruto, you are to speak of this to no one, and I mean no one. Not until I give you the go ahead on that person, okay? Crystal clear, but why? asked the blonde. It was my former student, Orikimaru of Sanin, who hired him. I see, said Naruto. This is most distressing. He has been more active lately. I will have to send word to Jiraiya about this, said. The blonde nodded, and then the name Jiraiya reminded him of something. Naruto's head snapped up. Gramps, I had a dream. Oh? And what happened in this dream, Naruto-kun? Asked the Hokage. The fourth Hokage appeared to me, said Naruto. Really? And what did he do or say? Asked the. He questioned me on my life's goals and what not. He gave me some really encouraging words. Said the blonde. But what does it mean that he would appear in my dreams? Me of all people. I'm just an orphan. I don't know Naruto-kun. I don't know said Sarutobi but added in his head. If you only knew Naruto. If you only knew. It seems I'll be able to tell you of your heritage sooner than I expected. You're becoming quite the powerhouse. I'll do it after the Chunin exams. Naruto, I sense great things to come from you, said the. Naruto looked at him happily. Thank you so much, Gigi. They looked at the 12 year old he considered as another grandson that was now beaming at him. It's true, Naruto, you've progressed further than your fourth was at your age. Wow, that's awesome. I'm so amazing, said the blonde. Sarutobi just smiled and nodded. All right, Naruto-kun, you need to get some rest now. You're gonna be very busy over the next couple of weeks. And why is that? Asked the blonde. Why the exams, of course. Said the... Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura were at training ground 7 waiting on Kakashi. He was, based on his usual tardiness, gonna be there in about an hour to an hour and a half. All right began Naruto. How about some meditation? The two looked at him like he grew another head. What? he asked. You and meditation, said Sakura as she started laughing. Hey, I do it all the time, said Naruto. I wish you weren't so loud, said Kyuubi. Shut it for balls, said Naruto to him in his mind. 
Anyways, you guys do what you want, I'm meditating. Said Naruto as he walked over to a tree, made twenty clones and they all started meditating. While in his meditative state Naruto began to wonder about his life, the meaning of life, his friends, his almost more than friend, the village, his dreams, his victories, his defeats. Life is like a race full of obstacles thought Naruto. If it weren't for the leaps, the bounds, the falls, the troughs, the crests, it'd be boring as hell one must come to find inner peace before they can truly understand the world around them I don't know. All I know is that I will never betray those closest to me, nor my village. I will not become a self-fulfilling prophecy. I will prove the village wrong. A while later Kakashi poofed into the clearing, yo, he said while waving. Sasuke and Sakura stopped their training and said, Hey! They were, after all, used to his tardiness. Come over here guys I have something for you, said Kakashi as he threw a rock at Naruto who, right before the rock hit him, reached up and pushed it back at Kakashi. Kakashi's eyes widened and he thought, so he finally used the first bit of that ability, what else will you do Naruto? Naruto opened his eyes. What the hell? He said. I don't know, said Kakashi, lying, Naruto still needs to get a little more mature before he takes that manipulation up. Anyways, get over here, demanded Kakashi. Naruto nodded and stood and walked over to the group. So what is Kakashi-sensei? Kakashi pulled out three forms. These are for the exams. You must fill these out and go to room 301 by no later than 4 p.m. tomorrow. All right, said Naruto. Let's train Kakashi-sensei. Kakashi shook his head. No, Naruto, rest you will need strength. All right, said Naruto. Idiot, said Kyuubi. Shut up, idiot, yelled Naruto. The other looked at him like he was crazy. What? I was talking to myself telling myself not to pester Kakashi-sensei for training right before a big test that will take all of our strength. The other nodded. Kakashi thought, talking to it now, I'm sure he'll turn it around. He'll probably turn the word impossible on its head just like his father and mother. Sasuke and Kakashi both disappeared. Naruto turned to Sakura. So, wanna go get some ramen? Sure, we can discuss whether or not we should take the test, said Sakura with a smile. What? Of course we're gonna take it, said Naruto. Booty don't know I feel like I'll only hold you two back, said Sakura. What? Are you kidding? You're the one that holds the team together then Kakashi-sensei isn't there. Could you imagine how much Sasuke and I would be at each other's throats if you weren't there to keep the peace? You have a good point Naruto, you'd kill each other, said Sakura. Precisely, said Naruto. Thanks Naruto, said Sakura as she hugged Naruto. He hugged back and said, You're welcome, now let's go get that ramen. Naruto, I thought you liked Hinata. I'm gonna tell her you were hugging Sakura. You're gonna get your butt kicked, yelled Konoamaru who appeared out of nowhere. Hey, it was just a friendly hug damn it, Naruto yelled as he took chase. I'm gonna wring your neck with your stupid scarf, said Sakura, also giving chase. Konoamaru rounded a corner and bounced off the back of a guy in black. The guy turned around. What the hell brat watch where the hell you're walking? Said the cat looking man. Kankuro, let it go dimwit, we don't want Gara to get mad at us. Said that blonde next to the guy in black. Oh come off it Tamari, I just want to have a little fun. Said the now identified Kankuro. Oh, Sanchinobi. Time to put on my Baka mask and gather some intel on the competition, thought Naruto. Hey, put me down. Naruto was drugged out of his thoughts by Konoamaru's screams. Hey you, yelled Naruto pointing his finger at Kankuro. Put the kid down or else. Or else what brat? Like you could do anything, said Kankuro raising his fist. As he was about to bring his fist to Konoamaru's face a rock hit his fist. Everyone's attention was turned to Sasuke sitting in a tree. Get lost, he said and crushed a rock in his hand. Who's the new kid? asked Kankuro. 
Yeah, who is the redhead? Said Naruto, shocking everyone except Gara. Kankuro, you're a disgrace. Came a voice from the other side of the tree Sasuke was on. This shocked Sasuke. I couldn't even sense him, but Naruto did, thought Sasuke. Gara reappeared next to Tamari and Kankuro. Apologies for my brother's stupidity. He is a fool. Sorry Gara, I just... Shut up! Or I'll kill you! Said Gara. then turned to Naruto. What is your name? Uzumaki Naruto. And yours? Said Gara, looking at Sasuke. Uchiha Sasuke. I will kill you both. Said Gara and turned his back and left. Weird, said Sakura. So how about we all go get some ramen, said Naruto. They all, even Sasuke, nodded at that and walked off. Naruto stayed behind for a second and made a shadow clone. The clone nodded and took off to the rooftops. Now that that's done Naruto thought then said, Hey, wait up for me. Next day. At 3.30 p.m. the three genin walked up to the second floor and saw three things. One, IT was really the second floor and there was a genjutsu on the sign on the door. Two, two older kids keeping people out. Three, a group of people protesting and one green clad kid gets knocked down. Hey, that's Anata's cousin. The one with a superiority complex thought Naruto. Any idiot can see it, it's the second floor fools, said Sasuke. Then one of the older kids attacked Sasuke while Sasuke brought up a leg to counter, but both were stopped as the green-clad kid appeared between them. Naruto didn't hear what was said but thought, holy shit, he's as fast as I'll get out. Indeed. There are a lot of strong ones in this group of young ones, said QB. Naruto only nodded. Naruto said, hey guys, I gotta go to the bathroom right quick. Naruto ran away to the restroom. Once inside he did use the restroom but then he made two shadow clones. He and one clone hoisted the other clone up into the vents above the sink. Then Naruto had the other clone transform into a rat and go into the walls. There now I can say I'm thoroughly prepared, thought Naruto. Good idea Kit, said. Thanks, thought Naruto and he ran to catch up to Sasuke and Sakura. They were in a room with stairs at the side and a big open area in the middle. He arrived just in time to see the beginning of the fight between Lee and Sasuke. Two minutes later. Wow, that guy wiped the floor with Sasuke thought Naruto. Yes, he's quite strong after what he said about the kid and his team. I see why the kid might have a superiority complex. The Hyuga I mean, said Kyuubi. I guess, thought Naruto to Kyuubi. Ten minutes later I found them in the test room at their seats. Naruto was right next to Hianta, yes he thought. That was weird how that sound guy took out Kabutone speaking of Kabuto. That guy was too fishy how did he have all that info it's not likely. But he might be a spy, thought Naruto. Maybe, said QB. In another five minutes the genin were taking the tests. Good thing I have those clones from the objective seems to be to cheat. Aha. They're testing our abilities to gather information, said Naruto. Correct, said QB. Naruto saw the rat clone come out of the wall, scaring quite a few people and causing a small commotion. Ah, a rat! yelled one Kunoichi from the leaf. Ah! screamed many of the people in the room as a small amount of chaos ensued near the front of the room. The proctor, Ibiki, and all the sentinels' eyes were busy. Naruto used this time to make and dispel a clone to tell the one in the air ducts to come to right above the test room and use a spyglass to get answers from someone who seemed to be doing well. A few minutes, and a few curses from Ibiki, later the room was once again filled with nothing more than sweating and frustrated genin. Naruto suddenly got the memories and started to copy them down onto his paper. I'm so awesome, thought Naruto, now for the tenth question. Lame said QB. Shut it for a ball, thought Naruto. They laughed at each other. Ten minutes later it was time for Ibiki to go over the rules for the tenth question and go over the rules he did. Hum's trying to break us. Ha! I get it. 
First we have to test our confidence in signing up as a team, then our intelligence gathering ability, and now our mental resolve thought Naruto. Amdu, said Kyuubi. Shut the hell up you furball, thought Naruto in his head. Ha! Huh? You say something, asked the fox who then said. K your teammate, the pink head, she's about to give up. Oh shit. I can't come this far for her lack of confidence in her skills. Screw us over he raised his hand in the air then slammed it down on the desk. Bring it on Ibiki. I don't care what the risks are, I still have to take this test. If I can't risk this, then how am I going to risk assassinating someone or infiltrating a highly guarded fortress with bare minimum information? I don't care if I'm a genin forever, I'll still become Hokage and then you'll answer me. Ibiki smiled, damn kid made a few teams stay. Ibiki then continued to explain to them how they passed and the importance of courage and intelligence gathering and how bad information could be fatal. In all this he had shown them his scarred head. An explosion and in through the glass came the weirdest woman Naruto had ever seen. Damn Ibiki, this many left, asked the woman. Well Anko, we have a little knucklehead, said Ibiki as he motioned to Naruto. The woman gave Naruto a smile that sent shivers up his spine. I will call you Rabbit. I must thank you Rabbit for giving me more rodents to hunt. She turned to the rest of the class and said, Meet at training ground 44. Enko then turned back to Naruto and threw a kunai at him, just cutting his cheek. Run, she said. Naruto gulped and dashed off. What a wonderful day thought Enko as she cleaned off another dango and flicked the skewer into a tree. Arg was heard from the forest nearby. Enko let out a contented sigh, kicked back on top of a picnic table and said, What a wonderful day indeed. Enko had been surprised at how many teams were left over from Ibiki she thought, no matter. My test is designed to cut at least half out but still that blonde best was interesting. Flashback Anko appeared in the clearing just outside the forest of death. Now just to wait for little rabbit to get he. She was cut off by a cold voice whispering in her ear. Here. On instinct she whirled around with a kanai she instinctively grabbed and threw it and hit nothing but air. Naruto said from a few feet behind her. What kind of special are you that I could get behind you? I was just letting you get your confidence up rabbit. Naruto smiled, sure Naruto added in his head, she's saving face. Okay, okay, you got me. How the hell did you sneak up on me like that? Anko asked. Kit, don't tell her, said the fox in Naruto's mind. Nah, shit. Hey, a ninja has his secrets. And with that, the other team started showing up. Naruto's eyes widened as Akusa Kunoichi appeared behind Anko. This ninja was powerful. If the chakra radiating off her was any indication. Also, Naruto had unsealed his primary seal and placed it on a smaller temporary seal keeping him at about 85% of his full strength, and he had not even seen the ninja moving in until the ninja was already standing still. Naruto shivered. This person is at least low jonin level. I'll be sure to tell my team to stay away from this one. All right. Maggots and rabbits sign this form. Flashback end. That's an interesting one, said Anko. Another scream. Hmm, I should go get more dango. The radio came to life. Anquil probably want to come look at this. Line break. It has been a relatively easy test so far. Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura had taken off through their gate and instantly raced off of the main path that they were on. They didn't want to be caught in the open. Hey guys wait a sec, said Naruto. Huh? What is it? asked Sakura. We have a heaven scroll so I made a few clones that transformed into fleas and then stayed inside of the scrolls of all the other teams. If they have an earth scroll they will dispel, return the memories to me, and we will be able to approximate where a team with an earth scroll is. He said. Great thinking, Dob, said Sasuke. Yeah, said Sakura. Thanks, team Banshee, replied Naruto, to which Sasuke smiled and Sakura hemmed. 
The clones also know to dispel when the team is stationary so all we really need to do is continue a little ways, set up a small camp in a smart location and fortify the heck out of it, said Naruto. Good plan, said Sasuke, with Team 8. Alright guys, what's the game plan? asked Kiba. Hinata, could you use your eyes to see where enemy teams are and could you also see what type of scroll they have? asked Kiba. She nodded. I know I can see the teams, but seeing their scroll depends on how they choose to hide their scroll. Hinata then activated her. There's a Kusa team. Never mind, it's an Earth scroll. Thank goodness. That woman has the most chakra I've ever seen outside of Naruto. And here's just looks evil. Hinata visibly shuddered. Well, we'll be sure to avoid them, said Shino, to which the other two nodded. There's one of the Mist teams. They have a Heaven scroll. They don't have all that much chakra either, said Hinata. What are they doing? asked. They are waiting in some trees. They have an activation that acts like a trap. It seems all three of the mist teams are using the same method. I can see right through it and should be able to transfer the view to yours. Then you can have your bugs go and drain their chakra. Kiba can cover me as when I transfer my vision to you I'm temporarily blinded. At least at the beginning stages of this I am. Said. Okay, but let us get closer to them. He said as they took off. Hey, they fell for it so easily through a mist genin. The blonde one is a complete idiot. The mist ninja then pulled out a kanai and let it fly. The kanai held true to its flight and penetrated straight into Naruto's forehead. The same happened to his two teammates. Too easy, said the team leader of the genin as they jumped down. All right, let's search these bodies for a scroll, said another genin. Yes, said the leader of their squad. The genins got busy searching the bodies of Team 7 before. Boom! All three clones turned bright white and exploded. The genin were all thrown back and hit trees. Then they were bound to their tree by ninja wire. Finally a pink-haired girl jumped down from the tree the leader was bound to and used it to get him to tell her where his scroll was. She reached into his jacket and pulled out a scroll. Naruto! She tossed it to the team ceiling expert. Sakura turned back to the genin and knocked him out. Sasuke and Naruto, after catching the storage scroll, proceeded to knock out the other two genin. Naruto looked the seal over. I'm just now at advanced ceiling level 2 out of 10, but I can tell this seal is completely low quality. Can you open it safely? asked Sasuke. Yes, I can, said Naruto. Whoever made this seal did it so hastily. They didn't even put a chakra-specific gate in it. They looked at him confused. It's like a door without a lock. Where the lock would be the chakra channel gate, and your specific chakra would be the key. So you can just open it? asked Sasuke. Yep, but still, just in case they have something else sealed in there. Naruto made a shadow clone that took the scroll and walked over to a tree stump and opened the scroll. Nothing happened. They must have sealed the exam scroll in this storage scroll when they first saw us coming into their trap, said Sakura. The two others nodded. Hey guys, I have to go, said Naruto. Huh? asked Sakura. You know, to the bathroom. Well then go dobe, said Saki. Naruto turned around and was about to go into the bushes when Sakura yelled. Not in front of me, you idiot. And she kicked him and launched him through the trees. A Naruto shadow clone poofed into existence next to Sasuke. Hey, I'm here just in case anything bad happens I can relay the message back to the boss. Sasuke and Sakura nodded. Wait. How did those clones hold together earlier after being stabbed in the forehead? Asked Sakura. Seals, said the clone. What all can those things do anyways? Asked Sasuke. A whole lot, said Naruto. Meanwhile with the real Naruto. Ah, that's much better, said Naruto as he finished up his business. He turned around to walk back to his team. As he turned around he came face to face with the Kusa Nin from before. Hello Naruto Kankukua where you are scared? taunted the creepy Kusanin. 
Naruto steeled his nerves and calmed down. He prepared for anything to happen. However, in the blink of an eye he was slammed on the top of the head by the Neen. Damn she's fast thought the blonde as his face quickly met the ground. Or it would have if it hadn't been for the Kusa Neen bringing her foot up to literally kick Naruto like a football, punting him away. Then he performed a summoning and summoned a snake beneath Naruto which swallowed him whole. I can't die as snake food, shouted Naruto as he made a few hundred clones that burst the snake. Doing so also alerted his clone with Sasuke and Sakura. With Sasuke and Sakura. It sure is taking Naruto a long time, said Sakura. HN. Ha, huh, said the clone looking up. What is it? asked Sakura. Being on the lookout boss just had his face handed to him. Be careful because boss is temporarily indisposed of at the moment. Just then Naruto walked into their line of sight and said, Hey guys, how are you doing? Great say Naruto come here, said Sasuke pulling out their scroll. Can you show me something on this? Sure, said Naruto as he walked over Kuku let me test you Sasuke-kun. Could you put some chakra into this storage scroll? I need to see something inside, asked Sasuke handing one of his storage scrolls over to Naruto. If it's really Naruto he'll know that his chakra won't work and only mine will, considering it was he who made the scroll for only me to use thoughts Sasuke. Sure, hand it over, said Naruto. Sasuke handed it over, good thing that's an empty scroll through Sasuke. Just when Naruto pushed chakra into the scroll Sasuke and Sakura leapt back and an explosion shook the forest. Sasuke threw a barrage of shuriken into the dust cloud that was formed. That scroll has a seal on it to where it only opens to my specific chakra. Naruto himself made it for me, so he should have known what it was and that it was booby trap so that if anyone else tries to force it open it explodes. You can drop the act of imposter, said Sasuke. Sakura simply nodded. Ku 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 my my my, you are pretty smart aren't you Sasuke-kun? said the Neen as the henge dropped and revealed the Kusa Neen. Let's see how you compare to Itachi though. This statement enraged Sasuke. It took all his willpower not to rush the Kusa Neen. How do you know Itachi? My my, so impatient, said the Kusa Neen. Suddenly the very air itself was saturated with so much killer intent that it felt like a liquid killer intent was in the air. This is insane thought Sasuke as he and both Sakura froze. They saw their deaths. They saw as the Kusanin pulled out two kunai and, with a simple flick of the wrist, sent the two kunai soaring into both of their heads. No. 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 No, thought Sasuke. I have to get stronger to avenge my clan. Sasuke took out a kunai and stabbed himself in the leg. He grabbed Sakura and disappeared just as two real kunai whizzed by where their heads used to be. That was a close one thought Sasuke. Sasuke, WH. He covered her mouth. He said in a soft voice. Should we need to be quiet? She nodded. Just then a giant snake came at them. Sasuke threw shuriken at it and killed it. Their victory was short-lived, however, when from within the snake the kusanin rose. Come, Sasuke-kun, let us see if you are worthy of my gift. Keep your gift to yourself, said the Kusanin. Don't you want to be as strong as Naruto-kun? asked the Kusanin. Sasuke hesitated. Shut up. Sasuke then offered one of their scrolls in exchange for free passage. At this time Naruto showed up and slugged Sasuke. Naruto! What was that for? screamed Sakura. You must be a fake Sasuke, because the Sasuke I know would never back down from a challenge. How could you achieve that goal of yours if you always ran away? Said Naruto. Sasuke furrowed his brow and smiled. You're right, Dobe. Thanks, dot damn you hit hard. Sakura Sasuke and I are going to team up on this guy. You stay back and support you when you can and be sure to keep a lookout for any other ninja snooping around. Said the blonde. Sakura nodded. Sasuke and Naruto stood next to each other. A or B? asked Naruto. B said Saki. Naruto's face was split with a grin. 
The Kusanin had been quiet just waiting. Naruto made three clones. They both grabbed Naruto and flung him high into the air as Sasuke threw many shuriken at the enemy Nin. The two shadow clones then ran at the Nin and began to engage him in a taijutsu fight. The Nin was just toying with him, it was obvious. Just then, however, a fireball came roaring at the Kusanin, who smirked and raised a mud wall in front of herself. Then a futon crashed into the Kusanin from above. Damn, I forgot about that idiot thought the Kusanin. The Nin was forced to jump back, but didn't notice that he had just backed into a tree. Ninja wire wrapped around her and then Sasuke sent a fire down the ninja wire and then Naruto used a futon, a great gust of fury that greatly enhanced the power and speed of the fire. Did we get him? asked Sasuke. No, that was way too easy, thought Naruto. Ku 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 you two are simply amazing, said Orochimaru. The Nin revealed himself by rising from the branch of the tree they were standing on. The only noticeable damage was that the Kusa Nin's face seemed like it was falling off. No wait, it is falling off. The Kusa Nin reached up and peeled off her face revealing it was actually a Hinata she. I simply must have you both, the snake said as he extended his neck towards the two. Both Sasuke and, surprisingly, Naruto froze from the sheer amount of killing intent the Nin was putting out. Likely just to make them freeze. Kit! Get the hell out of there! Naruto snapped out of his stupor and pushed Sasuke out of the way as the Kusa Nin's fangs sank into Naruto's neck. Naruto screamed in pain and then his world started to turn dark. Kit, can Dot hear me what Dot on its invading Dot hold it off? Naruto collapsed. Naruto! Both Sasuke and Sakura shouted. Ku ku ku, you should worry about yourselves. Especially you dear Sasuke-kun, said Orochimaru. Orochimaru! Someone screamed as they landed between Naruto, Sasuke, Sakura and Orochimaru. Oh Hanko-chan! Fancy seeing you here how have you been? He asked like a snake, licking his lips. I am just trying to acquire a new one. The blonde or the Uchiha? Asked Anko. Both, said Orochimaru. Tough shit then, said Anko. I guess I should take my leave but Sasuke, if you ever want the real power required to kill Itachi you will have to quit playing ninja in this weak village. Come to me and I will make your ambition come to fruition. He turned to Anko. But be warned, if you stop the exams the hidden leaf will feel my unbridled rage. And then he sank into the tree. Everyone there shivered. Brats, do you have both scrolls? They nodded. Okay, go find some place safe and rest then book it to the tower. I need to report this to the ASAP. Here, this is an alert seal. If anything were to happen, put chakra into this seal and it will summon me here, said Anko handing a seal to Sasuke. The two nodded, picked up their teammate and took off. Damn you Orochimaru what the hell are you planning besides taking the Uchiha? Said Anko as she took off to the tower.